Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I want to show you some new PCBs that I uh, got from PCB Bay and well these are the PCBs and they are going to well they are called the home sensor board because if you remember um, uh, I did a couple of videos I stopped them a, a few months ago about uh, holiday home automation that I want to um, well create some sort of automation or monitoring to my holiday home and I had a couple of ideas how I'm going to create a sensor board and in the past I have done these uh, breadboard prototypes and I was you know setting them up with uh, home assistant and ESP home I was playing around with them so I thought okay uh, these are working they should be working so I should be making a final PCB so this is what I decided to do basically it's it, it contains all the ideas that I had about uh, what this uh, sensor board should include and uh, <clears throat> the heart of it as you can see is a Vmos D1 Mini and um, I integrated a couple of uh, I2C sensors it doesn't look re really pretty but the idea is that I included four different sensors here so the BH1750 uh, the BME uh, what is it 280 and a light, so that was the light sensor, and then another temperature and humidity sensor, which is the SI. Uh, anyway, I'm going to overlay on the screen because I forget all these I squared C sensors. So you can have them here. Of course, you will not use all of them, so you can maybe overlay them or use a bigger standoff like this if you want two sensors on top of each other. There is also the radar motion sensor. I also left places for a DHT22 and some, uh, so that's temperature humidity sensor, or if you want the DS18B20, uh, the one wire temperature sensor, you can hook them up as well. And I also left a space for the pull up resistors, not pull up, the resistors that they come with. Um, on my prototype, I also use the NeoPixel, so I have like free connections to like a NeoPixel board. I also included this connection which connects to the analog input port so this I can use with a current clamp to measure current um, so these are all the sensor oh yeah sorry and I also have a header where I can connect a free um, basically like a free gang relay board uh, to it so if I want to control anything I can use this relay board I also included two, two more headers so if you need to access any of the pins they are routed out to these pins here, so this one and this one here, plus 5 volts, 3.3 volts and ground for all of them if you want to do something custom. So that's basically the sensor part of it, the, the lower part of the PCB. And the upper part is all the power management. And again, I wanted to include all the different power options that I would likely to use. First of all, uh, there is, uh, if I want to use mains power, then I can populate a screw terminal here and I can use my favorite high link power supply so this is going to come here and also I included a place for a varistor just to clamp um, high voltage transients so that's optional you can leave that and on the um, on the mains part I also included a fuse block so and uh, it has a hundred milliamp fuse so if I want I mean um, I can protect it with a fuse as well, which I thought maybe because it's going to go into my holiday home and it's going to be removed, probably it's, it's better to include more protection than fewer or less, sorry. And um, maybe I could have used a self-resetting fuse. So this is just a normal fuse. Um, ah, that could be something for version two. So this is the option if you want to power it from mains. If you want to power it from DC, I included a footprint for one of these small DC to DC converters. So that pretty much accepts anything from like 24 volts and then it brings it down to 5 volts, 1.3 amps. So that's plenty for the ESP. So you can mount it like this and there is a DC input header there. And if you don't want to use any of these, you just have 5 volts. You can use this header which is going to provide 5 volts and ground. So you can feed in 5 volts from here. I could have added some sort of USB connector, but these USB connectors are really, really small. So I thought I could use this one. And I happen to have um, a cable 
which is, um, yeah, I, I had like an old USB cable, which I think the USB part was broken, so I just uh, replaced it with this header. So that's what I'm going to use it here. And that's purely for testing. Um, the only thing, I mean, the only, well, not the only, but one thing I haven't really thought about is that once you place the uh, mic, uh, sorry, the VMOS D1 Mini, <clears throat> you don't really have access to the USB port. Um, well, if you are using one of the I2C sensors, because they are going to be sitting here, so there's no way that you can fit a USB plug in there, unless there is some very low profile 90 degree connectors, but I don't have any of those. So here, I don't have any I2C, so it can be powered from the USB, at least for testing purposes. But to test this board, I had to use this uh, 5 volt um, supply on the side. So, and, oh, this is one more example where you can, how you can mount multiple sensors. You can purchase these really long uh, pin headers and they can just sit on top of each other. I mean, you know, this board is anyway not going to be small. So I thought, you know, adding some height is not going to make a huge difference anyway. Actually, there is one thing about the uh, power measurement or the current clamp uh, mode that I well made a mistake on is this power jack. Sorry, this uh, three point three and a half millimeter jack here. Um, I have these small jacks that I I don't remember where I've gotten them, but they have like four output pins. And uh, when I selected the part in EZDA, um, I could see the same part appearing. I mean, it has the say it has the it was looking the same, um, you know, just from the outside. I mean, I looked at the small picture and I thought, oh, I just managed to pick the same part. But after it got manufactured, I realized that this has a different footprint than mine. So it has like two legs, sorry, three legs. Mine has four legs and they are slightly in a different place. So the only way I could fix this is that I bend the two legs out and um, there are some plastic studs here which are again in the wrong place so I had to cut them but at least I was able to slide in with a little bit of force the other two legs and that got soldered in and that seems to be holding the the jack in place uh, securely so that's another uh, mistake that I have done and also in the you know in the I square C part I really had to squeeze all these parts together I didn't want to make a huge board which means that the foot footprints are printed on top of each other but um, at least um, they are all in, you know, slightly different uh, font sizes and you can still read them. So, and of course, it doesn't really matter whether that's the, you know, the BH7080, as long as you have the same, you know, pin spacing or sorry, the pin layout. So, for example, on this top one, it's 5 volt ground and SCL and SDA. So, at, as long as you have the that same sensor sorry a sensor with the same footprint and it's i square c of course you can mount it here and technically you can also mount it the the lower side so maybe you have one sensor which is here and the other one could be sticking down there uh, just you know remember how you flip it around so you have the correct pins and that these are the boards that i'm going to be playing around with and by the way let me just uh, switch screens um, PCBWay is also running a contest, so there is a PCB design contest, and I have seen PCBWay's, uh, PCBWay PCBs and PCBWay project before, and I have to say that there are a lot more experienced people building wonderful projects. Well, I don't think that my PCB is going to be successful in any way, uh, in any shape or form, but I think this is probably my best or probably widely used contribution that I can make. So I think I'm going to add this PCB as a contest project here. As you can see, you can pick themes. So there are two main themes, the IoT and the robotics, and there is a free theme, which is well, pretty much everything else. So I'm going to be posting uh, this PCB here. So once I've done that, I'm going to include the, uh, the link in the video description. So <clears throat> anyone who really likes this can participate. I mean, as I said, this could be designed slightly different way. Um, I'm, I could have placed some of the power management on the other side and then shrunk the PCB that way, but I really wanted to separate the mains power from you know, the DC part. And as far as I learned from other YouTube videos, 
you want to leave a physical distance between the two. So here, as you can see, that's my physical separation between the mains part and the DC part. And I also learned somewhere that uh, you should have this slot uh, between the, the mains terminal because uh, this FR4 material, which the PCB is made of, uh, apparently it, um, it could degrade and it could start to conduct here. So if you have a slot there, then the chance of that happening is going to be much less. So that's my uh, well, pretty much only advancement that I have done. And now I realize I should have uh, switched the screen. No, like this. So as I said, well, that's my PCB and um, that's going to be on the uh, PCB way contest. If you're interested in this particular PCB, you can just go to the project and order your PCB from there. And talking about the various sensors that I want to build from this, uh, well, I have two prototypes here. So one is going to be the main living room sensor. So that's going to be measuring um, like you, the usual temperature, humidity. So I'm using a BHP 680 here, and I also want to detect motion. So that's going to have an infrared, uh, sorry, the radar motion sensor. And it, it will also have the mains power components here, which I haven't soldered. So that's going to be one board. And the second board is the one which is going to control the fan. So I'm using the current clamp to measure the fan power consumption. Um, so I can create some sort of loop back. Loop back. And I'm also going to use the relay board <clears throat> so I can power the devices. Sorry, I can power the, uh, the fan. And the reason I have these four relays because this is a fan which has like an on-off terminal and then it has, I think, two or three other terminals to select various speeds. So I might not actually use the fourth uh, relay, but definitely it's going to be more than two. So I just picked this four uh, relay board. And I think I'm not going to use any of the other components. Uh, by the way, these are two 10K resistors and a 10 microfarad capacitor. I might add another temperature sensor here, which I can do, but I think that's going to be enough for this. So this is the fan board. And by the way, the relay outputs are using one of the I2C uh, outputs. So you can't use the relay with the I2C. I think this is probably the only limitation. Uh, the rest of the pins are not shared, of course, except the expansion headers. So these are the two boards that are done at the moment. And I have two bedrooms where I also want some sensors, which are, I think it's going to be something similar like this one. Uh, probably instead of the BME, I'm going to use a simpler temperature and humidity sensor. I mean, I don't need an additional uh, barometric pressure sensor. And I will use the same motion sensor as this one. So that's going to be fairly similar to this. And, um, and that's it, I think, at least for the time being. Probably I should have a different type of sensor for the outside, where I can measure outside temperature, humidity, and maybe light uh, uh, as well. And for that, uh, what I'm planning to use is I'm going to use these uh, DC converter because I don't want to have mains outside in, uh, in a box like this, especially because I, uh, for the temperature and humidity readings, I need to have some airflow. So that box would need to have some gaps. So I think I'm going to have like a 12 volt power supply inside. I'm just going to rule the 12 volts out and I'm just going to use this small chip to convert it down to five volts. So this is why uh, it has been included. And if you are using this and the board is too big, you can basically just you know chop off that part because then the the mains part of it is not required anymore so that would be probably the fourth or the fifth board that i would install and since we are talking about the future i also want to share some other um well sort of developments again you probably have seen on my previous videos where i was talking about the prototype of these boards and how i'm going to use them in uh, esp I'm using ESP Home and in Home Assistant. Well, I actually decided that I'm not going to use um, ESP Home, uh, sorry, Home Assistant anymore, because um, I'm going to implement most of the uh, knowledge or logic in Node-RED anyway. I don't really feel like that uh, ESP Home, e, not ESP Home, Home Assistant is going to add a lot of value. So I'm ditching the Home Assistant. So the server is just going to be um, Node-RED and MQTT broker. 
but I really like ESP Home. So they are still going to be running ESP Homes and I'm going to cover this in a future video, but I learned how to use ESP Home without Home Assistant and I have both of the YAML files for both of these boards and they are working at the moment. So if I plug this in, this is the relay board. And if I plug in the power, I'm just using a power bank. So if I plug the power in for this board, then we should hopefully be able to see that these connect. And if I bring up my MQTT Explorer, then we should start to see these posting messages. So one is called the living, sorry, the living room, and the other one is called a fan. And yeah, the fan is definitely running. I could see some something happening here. Yeah, and also the living room, it you know shows motion now. So the motion sensor and all the other sensors are working. And this is all in um, ESP uh, in um, uh, ESP Home. Yes. So I pretty much was able to reuse the YAML file that I created before with some additional changes, like I added the MQTT section and also some section where I can um, define the topic, but um, it is working and, uh, you know, it is working fine with, where is my, yeah, it's here. It is working fine with, you know, without Home Assistant. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I actually, I wanted to implement, I wanted to use ESP Easy for this, but ESP Easy doesn't support the BME 680. So that's why I started thinking that there must be a way to use ESP Home even if you are not using Home Assistant. So, and yes, of course it is possible. So now all of them are working. I think probably, the, okay. I think the, there is some, you know, uh, issue with the connection here, but it is working. And uh, I also configured, yeah, it is working now. And I also configured the uh, ESP Home to have a web server. So this is the web server for the living room sensor, which is this one. And also have the web server for the fan controller. And I can even control the LEDs from here. Sorry, the outputs from here. So everything is working. Um, I, I, and I actually quite like the interface and the whole thing. So what I think I'm going to be covering in the near future is how you can use ESP Home if you are not using Home Assistant. So just with Node-RED and how you install window, uh, the required software in Windows and, and and basically how you use it. And I have to say it is fairly easy. It is so easy. And uh, because I also want to keep this uh, video short, well, how short is going? Oh, that's just 90 minutes, so I think we are good. Because I want to keep this video short, I think I'm going to cover these various boards in separate videos. So if you are interested in uh, the sensor one or the relay one and how to how I configure them in ESP Home, I will be doing separate videos on those. But um, that's where I'm at the moment. Uh, winter is coming, so I should really wrap this project up because once the bad weather starts, we don't really go to the summer house and obviously all these should be deployed and up and running and i haven't even started implementing any logic in node-red so um, i better hurry with that if you are interested in any of these i'm going to include the links in the video description if you forget anything then just you know ask me in the comment section and i'm going to uh, include that back in the videos like the project file the pcb way project the pcb way contest link and that sort of stuff but I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.